There's a new kind of small business in town and they want you as a patron. Joining me today to discuss his latest venture is Alexis Ohanian and musician Kina Granis. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, okay, good. Alexis, mm -hmm. Patreon, mm -hmm. your latest investment. Mm -hmm. Tell me exactly what it does. All right, well, this is something I'm really excited about. Yeah. Uh, Patreon provides a platform for artists, for creatives, to get recurring revenue from their fans for creating the work that they love to make. It's mm -hmm. patronage, right? It's been yeah. around since the, you know, the Medici family was doing it during the Renaissance. <laughs> now any one of us can be a Medici, right? Mm -hmm. for, for a dollar, for a few dollars, we can feel like we are supporting an artist we love and, and helping them make great content. Why, why is an investment like that important to you? Well, you know, I've spent Oh, geez, I spent the better part of the last five years working with artists, a lot of web comic artists, yeah. XKCD, Saturday Morning Breakfast Cereal, Dinosaur Comics. These are artists who, before the internet, never would have had jobs because mm -hmm. they never would have gotten their comics printed in newspapers. And I've worked with them on a ton of crowdfunding campaigns, the Kickstarters and the like. And what was so interesting was it was clear fans wanted to support artists. They wanted yeah. to help them make great art. But what artists really craved was just the peace of mind to know that they didn't have to worry where that next paycheck was coming from. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to have to do it one campaign at a time every six months. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have just an ongoing relationship so they could do right by their fans and their fans could do right by them. And it just was so clear to me as soon as I saw this between Jack and Sam, two amazing founders, Jack built this to solve his own problem. Yeah. Uh, they were the team that was going to do this and it, it's going to be big. Okay, so I talked to Jack this morning. Mm -hmm. He is such a great guy, has such a great vision. Some of the great facts about Patreon include it's only 13 months old, already has 25,000 artists, including wow. Kina subscribing on this, $2 million paid out to artists, a million in the last few months, $15 million raised in venture funding, mm -hmm. and 180 new creators a day, half of which of Patreon users are YouTube creators. So Kina, what, what drove you or what kind of inspired you to join this? You know, it just made a lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. It helps that Jack Conti started this and he's kind of from that world. Mm -hmm. And so you know that coming from a YouTube world also, he knows what we're going through. Yeah. Um, but in talking with Jack and his team, they really just laid it out really clearly. You know, we've been putting out videos for years and years and years and we have these people out there that want to support us, but they can't support us for what they're coming there for. They're here for these videos. They're just, there's no other way to do it. Yeah. So it really has made a lot of sense, and the fans I found have been really excited about it. Where at first I was kind of afraid, because I'm ask for money, <laughs> but people are like, no, I want to support you. And yeah. it's been really incredible. I mean, you have almost a million YouTube subscribers, so they have to love something about you and want to support you <laughs> with that, for sure. And so something kind of interesting with, of course, all the YouTube news lately, Jack today told me, you know, 100,000 views is a football stadium of people. There needs to be a better way. Imagine if the 49ers came off the field and got 50 bucks for the game. So YouTube recently announced their streaming service, but they're kind of edging out the indie artists because of this insane contract. Alexis, what do you think about <coughs> YouTube's new strategy? I, I think it's an amazing opportunity. Um, oh. Don't get me wrong, I remember YouTube launched the same year as Reddit, yeah. and it changed so many people's lives, right? It made streaming video trivial. That was really hard in 2005. Now it's trivial to do, and that's, mm -hmm. that's distribution. That is a huge part of any creative's way to get the message out. Yeah. So YouTube and the like have done an amazing job getting distribution right. Yeah. But that's only part of the story, right? Record labels, traditional companies in previous industries they, they had the means to distribute and the people didn't. Now everyone has the means to distribute if you've got a smartphone or a webcam and an internet connection. The next step is the monetization. And yeah. at the end of the day, you know one of my favorite stories about this and, and one of the reasons why I think Patreon's in such a good place, um, th this is something that has been so fundamental to art for so long. Um, there was a woman who was a struggling writer. She didn't get a chance to really get anything done on her first book and her friend who was pretty well off, said, you know what, take a year off, here's 30, 40 grand, whatever you would have made, like bussing tables, just write your book. Mm -hmm. And uh, that woman was Harper Lee, and that book was <laughs> To Kill a Mockingbird. That's a true story, look it up. Yeah. We would not have one of the best works of American fiction if it weren't for this one woman being lucky enough to have this one friend who, who sort of patronized her for a year. Mm. There are so many more opportunities now than ever for these artists to find these patrons. It doesn't yeah. have to be just one rich friend, it can be lots of their fans. And Patreon solving that key key problem because there is oh there's always been this idea that you've either made it 
or you're a starving artist. Yeah. And what Patreon does is show that there's a middle ground. You don't have to be, you know, Rihanna, and you don't have to be a total unknown who's working three jobs mm -hmm. just to work on art when you can. There, there's a middle ground. And, and it's exciting because it's going to mean so much great art. Yeah, and it kind of allows you too as a, as a creator to kind of create whatever you want or whatever your fans are looking for. So Kina, what are you going to do for your patrons? Um, well, I've been trying to brainstorm the best way I can yeah. do it. And you know, you, you give a lot of things to them, whether those are Google Hangouts or special unreleased songs that I'm going to be sending them. But as far as what I'm going to be doing with what they're giving me, it's opening all sorts of doors like making more official music videos which are so much money and as an yes. independent artist you don't have just tons of money to make <laughs> those so they're going to be funding those they help me bring my band on tour when i'm going around um, we're doing a world tour this year and it's so expensive to tour and they're making wow. that possible and they're also i'm doing 15 percent of mine is going to the leukemia and lymphoma society so that's it's wonderful. just like wow. all around really awesome thing yeah. so it's been really incredible and that's what Jack said inspired him was he was making a music video that he knew would get a couple million views put in all of his credit cards all of his savings spent ten thousand dollars creating a video and made a hundred dollars <laughs> YouTube video so yep. having this it's great inspiration Definitely. And, and that's that that is the I think that that's really at the core of it right like I, I discovered you from a video that front page on reddit like three or four years ago yeah. this beautiful stop-motion video which you should all watch <laughs> if you haven't um, and, and, you know, it, 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 it pops, right? Millions of mm -hmm. people see it and are just enamored with it. Um, now there's something like Patreon for them to actually build a relationship with the artist, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's all we seek out. And what's going to be so cool, all right, let's time travel, okay? Five <laughs> or ten years from now, mm -hmm. right? You're going to be 100x bigger, right? And you're going to have fans who supported you on Patreon from right now. And you're going to have ways through software. Software makes this trivial. You're going to have ways to say, all right, for, my, for the fans who've been supporting me for, the, for, for 10 years, or the ones who've been backing me, for the first thousand people who are willing to say, yes, you're awesome, yeah. um, you're coming backstage with me on this tour, or you're getting this or that or other. And you can really start to reward your biggest fans, the one who, who, who always have driven celebrity careers mm -hmm. and, and superstar artist careers. Um, and you can reward them for, for being supportive uh, in, and maybe solve that hipster problem of, oh, I used to love them before they got cool. Right. <laughs> I mean, people will still probably do They'll that, probably but that's okay. That. We'll love them <laughs> just the same. Okay, Alexis, I need to flatter you for a second because Jack oh. was also saying, I said, you know, what does it mean to you to have an, invent <coughs> um, an investor like Alexis? And he said, he's the most inspiring person. Since oh, seed geez. funding, he's been very hands-on. He's been hustling for Patreon and believes so much in community. And he went on to talk about, of course, Reddit and mm -hmm. how you really understand community and um, gave me a couple <coughs> of details about the deal you guys made, and it is incredible. Mm -hmm. Are you kind of like the new generation of investor who's still giving that control to the guy who invented it? I, I, think, I think I have to be. Yeah. What has changed and what terrible investors have yet to realize <laughs> is that founders have more and more control than ever, mm -hmm. uh, and that you have to. If you, if you want to be a good investor, you have to know that you don't know best. And yeah. I think because I'm so, I'm, I'm not that far removed from being an entrepreneur myself. Yeah. Um, between Reddit, between Hitmonk, like I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. And I also know, <clears throat> and I think this is interestingly something Jack knows about his artists, is that he doesn't, he, he, knows, he knows as an artist himself what's best for his particular community of fans. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't know what's best for your community. The, every artist on the platform is gonna bring their own community, and they're yeah. gonna know the ways to interact with them, the perks and all that. And I think the fact that Patreon has this, this, this very strong approach of putting the artists first, mm -hmm. the same way that we knew we had to provide a great user experience, the way we had to build a platform that anyone could sort of take ownership in, uh, is gonna bode really, really well for them. Um, and it's a chance, to, I, I think, it's, it's so cool because I sit here and I'm thinking, wow, the way this is going to look five or ten years from now is going to have such a big impact on culture and the yeah. kind of art creation because, and I don't think this is hyperbolic at all, but I say it all the time, um, is that this really could fuel a second renaissance because now more than ever, people are getting access to an audience through the distribution, right? Thank you, YouTube, for at least solving, for solving that problem. <laughs> and now through monetization, through mm -hmm. something like Patreon, these 
artists, I mean, Smooth McGroove is one of my favorites, <laughs> and he's a dude in Oklahoma who makes a cappella video game theme song videos. Oh my god. And, and there's, a, there's a community it. for that, yeah. and that's awesome. And no label, no, no, no gatekeeper would have been like, yes, yeah, what the world needs is <laughs> a cappella video game <laughs> movies and like Puff Puff Cigar. Yeah. No. And, and there are going to be more and more artists than ever getting this access, and then because they have the peace of mind that there's recurring revenue, mm -hmm. they don't have to work the three other jobs. Yeah. They can focus on making art, and they're going to get better at it faster, and it's going to have I think it's just a huge explosion. I mean, I, I hope so far into the Patreon process you've been excited. I just oh, officially yeah. backed yeah. you today, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thank I'm you. sorry it took me so long. <laughs> <laughs> I officially Thanks backed so you. Much. Yeah. 300 patrons strong now. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so one thing we have to touch on before you leave, because mm -hmm. this actually probably is the perfect investment for you. Mm -hmm. One, you're no stranger to crowdfunding, and mm -hmm. two, you believe in giving everyone a chance, <laughs> because you recently did $20,000 of crowdfunding. Nice for some new ads in DC about mm -hmm. net neutrality. Yes. Where are you on that? What's uh, happening? Still still encouraging everyone to contact the FCC. Yeah. Uh, John Oliver did an amazing segment on his show about mm -hmm. writing it about that. Um, and just making sure the FCC does its job, reclassifies broadband as Title II. I know that's really not the most entertaining or interesting thing, but it's yeah. really important because it means that ISPs, Comcast, Time Warner, Cox, mm -hmm. cannot discriminate traffic that goes through their tubes, through yeah. their pipes. And in this age, you know, where streaming content, where, where video content is so important, um, a level playing field is vital because mm -hmm. I don't want my cable company picking winners or losers. I don't want them picking the next YouTube or the next Netflix. I don't want them picking which artists are going to have the ability yeah. to succeed over others. I want the internet and people on it to decide. That's great. And you know, maybe not even just net neutrality, but you know, what is it? Why do you think that leveling the playing field for YouTube people or writers or comic strip artists? Why do you think leveling the playing field is so important? Um, well, it kind of reminds me of what you were saying earlier about this middle ground, and I feel like that's what YouTube has allowed for a lot of musicians and writers and directors and all of these things. Because in the past, you were either on a major label doing it big or you were just busking on the streets and I did yeah. that for a long time <laughs> and it was great but yeah. you're kind of like oh, well this doesn't go too far yeah. with YouTube there are all these people now that are getting to do exactly what they want they don't have to answer to an A&R person saying that's not a hit or that's yeah. not what we're looking for so it allows people to make more genuine art and then it allows people around the world to support that and it's just I think it's incredible great Guys, thank you so much for joining me and telling me all about Patreon. I'm so excited to hear all about it. Thanks for having us. Kina, I heard a rumor that you might be willing to play a song for us. Yeah, let's do it. Great. Okay. Well, let's head downstairs. <laughs>
Let's keep up.